Hi, I'm Mara Webster with InCreative Company, and thank you so much for joining us today for an incredibly special event and conversation. We're celebrating not only the immense contribution that Lynn Shelton made to the screen as a filmmaker, but also talking about the wonderful tribute some of her closest friends and collaborators put together in her honor, her effortless brilliance, the celebration of Lynn Shelton through film and music. We're so thrilled today to be joined by Mark Duplass, Megan Griffiths, and Mel S. Lynn, who all produced and then Megan also directed the special. Um, and before we dive into the conversation, uh, I'd love to throw over to a clip that we have of some of Lynn's work on the screen as a filmmaker in feature films. Hey, what's up, grown up me? How's life? Do you have a boyfriend? <laughs> do you still love Carson McCullers? Are you still best friends with Maxie? Where do you live? Seattle? Paris? Wherever you are, I hope you're doing exactly what you want to do. If you ever get sad, remember that I was thinking of you once. Yeah, I guess it's easier when you're young. Mm -hmm. All you need from someone is to feel stupid around him. Mr. Tell I had a dream, you know, back then. Uh, I was going to uh, be in a pretty important rock band. What do you need when you're older? You need to feel like you're on the same side of what seems stupid. Are we just supposed to believe everything that's been fed to us from the time we were a little kid to now? I mean, I just. When I have a job, I'm, I'm good at it. And, you know, come home every day to somebody that I love and be good to them. And uh, maybe go for a hike every now and again on the weekends. Hey! Oh, yeah. Oh, shit. Just got was, a customer. Yeah. I got to New York and I uh, lived down the Lower East Side. And I went to the Sidewalk Cafe and there was a waitress there. She's pretty, pretty struck. And she was kind of loopy. I had an edge to her, pretty funny. I don't know, she sort of had my number, you know. I have a job, I don't know if you heard. I got a job that is uh, going great. They like me there a lot. Um, they actually like, Give me a chance, and uh, you're really nice to me, and I'm doing good there. I miss you. I miss my friend. So I've been thinking about you um, a bit over the last few weeks. Um, I hear what you say about wanting a simple life, but um, I feel like I'm just getting started. I want more. And love is, love is, love is love. No matter who you're thinking of. So you can open all those doors that someone closed so long ago. Cause you're bolder when you say, I am through, I am through. Room for something to begin. And I wanted to start by talking a little bit about putting the special together, you know, and that film clip is, is part of the special that you built out because there was such an outpouring of, of community when Lynn passed and, and it, the, the special is a real celebration of not just everything that she brought to screen as a filmmaker, but who she was as a person, who she was as a family member, as a friend and, and as a mother and all of those aspects of her. And so I wanted to ask you all about the, the sense of community that really came together and putting this together in a pandemic, but also the challenge in really trying to build something that spoke to all of those elements and really said what you wanted to be able to tell the world about Lynn. Um, I'm emotional just watching that again. I, I haven't watched the film montage for a while, um, but uh, the after Lynn passed last year, it was so overwhelming for all of us and, um, and I know I, I just really needed a place to put my energy and, and to sort of focus my grief because I felt a bit 
sort of at sea. Um, and then pulling this together really um, gave me that in a big way and also let me sort of process grief. And, um, and we really, yeah, I, I don't remember like exactly how we um, landed on the format that we did, but it was something we were trying to consider this idea of representing all of Lynn's life and that is impossible because she had a very, very full life. Um, and so we chose to focus it on her film work and the music and film relationship because that was such a huge part of what she loved about what she did. Um, and it also allowed us to bring in so many different people and so many beautiful artists who were, uh, who were just also looking for ways to process and navigate. And I think doing this for them also gave them um, sort of somewhere to direct all this, like sort of tr this grief and sadness and, and sort of honor her memory in some way. Yeah. And in all of the, the Q and A's that I've ever watched or conversations that I've had with people, I've never witnessed someone's name come up more than Lynn's as someone who was just <laughs> monumentally influential. And I feel like there's so many stories in the world and so many projects that have happened because of the encouragement that she gave people to really just go for it. And I was really interested if any of you have really witnessed that and seen films come to fruition or see someone step behind the camera as a director because of that impetus and that confidence that she instilled in them um i've definitely seen it many times and i think that you know in a very strange and sort of ironic way this tribute to lynn is in many ways um in the wake of her spirit and how she made her movies um you know this this is the kind of movie that lynn would say you should all get together and go make right now. Um, she used to get together a group of her favorite people when they either had downtime or she felt like, hey, it's time for us to make something right now. And she gathered around a, a central idea she had or a theme. And it would often be not quite fully prepared and we'd all be a little bit nervous um, and we'd have to figure it out on the day, but it was done with, with love and it was done with this wonderful sense of creative alacrity uh, that kept you on your toes and kept you a little electrified. Um, and I think Megan pulled this project together very much in that spirit and as sort of an emissary of how Lynn might have, have done it. And I think that we just, made another movie together with Megan that was very much in Lynn's spirit and it, it, it's here with us. Yeah, and I think the thing that we did with this special that Lynn, was, that was a big part of Lynn's life and process was the marriage of music and film. And I think that, you know, she was so involved in the Seattle film music scene and had so many friends in that realm and then also on the film side and, it was really, I think her goal and the thing she loved more than anything would be to, to marry those. The number of musicians she pushed in front of the camera to act and, uh, and just like blur those lines of what's in front of and behind the camera was very in her spirit. She was the only director who pushed me to act and I don't know <laughs> if I will ever do it again, but, uh, but it was, you know, and I think we, that was sort of something that we really embodied with this special. And I think that was a big priority for Megan was to take those two loves and those two communities and, and bring them together for Lynn. Yeah, and I'll say too, just um, in terms of people that she may have pushed off of, was sort of out of stasis into action. Um, I'm one of those people, a hundred percent. Like I was, when I met Lynn, I was already trying to get my film, The Off Hours made. And, um, and I spent many, many years trying to get it made. And one of the things that pushed us over is, uh, the Independent Spirit Award speech that she gave when she won the Someone to Watch Award for My Effortless Brilliance, um, where she just was basically used her platform at that moment to say, um, go make your movie, like just find a way, get your friends, go get it done. And, and, and that's, you know, we did that with that film and, and then so many others. And now I feel like everything I do, I'm looking for and finding Lynn's influence 
And Mark touched a little bit before on on some of her stylistic approach when it came to having a central theme and having an idea of where it was going, but also leaving that freedom of discovery when you got to set. And I think people really underestimate how much intention and planning and skill goes into improvisation as a filmmaking style, because it's not even just the director having a sense of what they're doing. It's the entire crew needing to know what's going, the camera team needing to, you know, have a sense of where it's going. And you're still at the end of the day telling a story in every single scene and you're not shooting sequentially. So there's so many obstacles to that. Um, and so I was just interested in asking all of you about the experience of watching the way in which she approached that because it was so much the fabric of so many of her films and she always, always, always nailed the landing with it. Um, I mean, I'll say, I think um, having been front row for some of those experiences, it, it is kind of mind blowing to me uh, and not some, it's not the way that I have, worked very much and so it, it always sort of feels like a very mysterious uh, um, talent to have and I it was really beautiful watching her and Mark work together on your sister's sister to sort of you know one in front of and one behind the camera um, helping to to guide these scenes to where they needed to go and then get you know when she would get into the editing room she would just have a huge amount of footage to to crafted to something. And I think that was where the real genius was, is just finding um, the best moments from all these experiments that were happening on set all the time. Yeah, I think even before that, the thing that I realized very quickly was for Lynn, it was all about the people and it was her finding the right people, the right humans. And sometimes it was the right humans before even them as artists and it was her being like I like your energy you're coming with me and it was this building of all the right people and her trust in the people and that's really where everybody was able to shine and make these kind of beautiful pieces is that like she was like the collector of all the the good elements and it became a self-fulfilling prophecy because mm -hmm. she loved and believed so deeply in these people that she chose. They became their best selves um, in front of her and, and on their sets, particularly the actors. You know, nobody loved actors and took great delight in their actors more than, than Lynn did, you know, and they, they were able to really thrive in that little, that little orb of her warmth. And Mark, you would probably be the best person to speak to this in terms of that relationship with actors, because again, you know, it just seems like she really came and was willing to share the vulnerability that she was always asking of you and of other actors that she was working with. And is that something that you found was very unique to her or have you experienced that with any other filmmaker in the same way and to the same degree? You know, it was such a, it feels like such a special time and a place of how Lynn and I made movies together um, in, in the way that, you know, there were these ultra micro budget films. Um, we were um, very, very excited about the, the technology that had just come out that allowed us to roll as much as we wanted to and, and be with our friends and make films and, and not feel like we were having to spend it all on 16 millimeter film. You know, we were, we were in the perfect place at the perfect time. Um, and I think we were also, we weren't 19 year old kids who didn't realize it. We kind of did realize it. And so it was, it was a really beautiful time in a lot of ways. Um, and as much as I, have some regrets that we didn't make more uh, movies that we won't get to see what Lynn did or would have gotten to make from here on out. Um, I do feel incredibly appreciative that we were able to get all of those movies from her, that I was able to be there for quite a few of them um, and experience that incredible um, alchemy that we had together for those years you know um and you're absolutely right that that a lot of what what made that those movies so special came from that that spirit of lynn who was always right there with you just cackling when you did something even that wasn't that funny and just taking great delight in you she was right there with you um and that gave you the courage to try all kinds of of things because you really felt like she was just loving what you were doing and that's you know you don't get that on a lot of sets 
And I also really love that she carved out a career on her terms. When you look at the fact that, you know, Seattle was always her home and she kept it as her home and she never picked up and felt like she needed to be in LA to make things happen. And instead really, you know, was a pivotal part of why Seattle has become such a powerhouse within the industry, you know, and you've all been there along the ride for that. And how have you seen the trajectory of what Seattle is within the film industry and how the film industry responds to that throughout your entire careers alongside Lynn? I mean, I've certainly, when I take films out to film festivals and I talk about Seattle, I am always getting back from people that they've heard about Seattle and this great Crutopia film community, you know, like that it's just this beautiful cocoon to make a movie. And, um, and that I think it's, you know, that's something that was very intentionally curated by people like Lynn and me and Mel and like, just, you know, trying to get uh, an atmosphere of people who were the crews and the cast all felt very taken care of and like they can be they could take risks and be vulnerable um, that they can come to you know that the crew can come to the production and ask for what they need and there's not an us versus them mentality all that stuff was like over years of time sort of curated and and I think we have a really beautiful community I still live here in Seattle it's where I am right now and we were touching a little bit before about how the special isn't just a celebration of her work on screen, but also her relationship within the music industry. And so I'd love to throw up one of the clips that you guys put together for the special. All right. With love, Dylan Shelton. I'll be your old hell I'll be your old hell I'll be your road down And that's just one of a myriad of really, really beautiful music performances that you guys were able to pull together from musicians that she worked with, that she loved, that she propelled in front of the camera. But in particular, I was very interested in, in how that particular performance with that sense of community really came together and what you felt that it represented about Lynn. Um, well, that was from a MTV web series that she did called $5 Cover. And um, uh, it was a project that, many, many uh, people involved with it have said brought the film and music community together in a, in a whole new way in Seattle and also um, which uh, brought the music community itself 
it together in a different way where sort of disparate parts of the community were now meeting each other through this project and overlapping. And it just, it really felt like it represented Lynn's love of music specifically. And then there was so many musicians involved in that project. It was hard to pick a song from that because there was a song in every episode, at least one, you know, and that song, we, I remember shooting it on Mel's birthday in a bar in Seattle, like with all of, with a bunch of the crew and well, all the crew and a bunch of the cast present and just having this really like um, emotional time watching it happen live. And, uh, and it just felt like the right song. And then when I sent it out to the, the other cast members, many of whom were musicians with their own songs. Nobody was like, why didn't you pick my song? They were just like, this is such a perfect song. Like, I just love, love the idea of singing this together and then just getting all those different um, pieces of it and like people playing music or playing instruments and singing and just being able to sort of patch it together. It, that was just one of the highlights of doing this whole project. Yeah, it was crazy. Every time I watch that, it's we're back in the room when we first shot that song. And even then in that moment, uh, and yes, it was my birthday and it was one of the best days of my whole life. <laughs> uh, but there was something in the air in that moment where it just felt like we all were a part of something magical and we were all doing what we loved. And I remember in that moment thinking like, how can I ever be sad ever again because I get to do what I love. And that was really... Lynn bringing everybody together and, and making that moment happen. And I feel like without a doubt, everybody, I mean, there was just the, we knew that was the song to, um, to memorialize that coming together. And as well as being behind the camera, there's also moments where, you know, she would step up on stage and perform with other musicians. There's times where, you know, she did step in front of the camera in projects and, and act in them as well. And what are some of each of your favorite memories of getting to see her either stepping in front of the camera on a movie or getting to see her stand up on stage, whether it was a music performance or even just a karaoke night, because it sounded like there was karaoke <laughs> every night in Seattle. <laughs> every Tuesday night. Um. <laughs> Although during but, uh, $5 cover, it was every night. <laughs> Let's be honest. Yeah, so it kind of evolved into a Tuesday night ritual. But uh, yeah, there was a, a guy, it's almost, it is literally impossible to choose a favorite moment. I mean, as an actor, she was really talented. And, um, and I really wish that I had had an opportunity to work with her more in that capacity. She was in the off hours um, in a, in a big role. And I think just, it was like, I remember when she auditioned for it, I was just like, oh my God, she's so talented. She can do everything. But um, I, I made a short with her in it and we did that together and she had like little cameos and stuff. And I, yeah, I just think um, she was sort of underutilized by all of us in that capacity, but she was also very busy doing all the other things she was good at. Um, and, uh, and so that, and then seeing her going to her 50th birthday, um, which was basic what she called her make a wish party. Um, like, and she just wanted to get up on stage and have all of her favorite musicians get up with her and sing. Uh, that was really special because she just wanted to be, she was a, sort of like a, a closeted rock star, I think, and just really uh, like basked in having a day where she could live that dream. I remember in, uh, in Hump Day, you know, she, she plays this sort of uh, leader of this, of this Dionysian Bacchanalian house. Um, and my sort of somewhat conservative character pulls up and she opens the door and 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 the first take Lynn surprises me with this like big wet kiss on the lips um and I just remember thinking oh, oh this is just like so perfect and so Lynn and and perfectly in character my my character's sort of in shock <laughs> dealing with it all um and yeah I really would have liked to have seen her have a little more time for some of the performing stuff I know she secretly really loved that there was the, there was that performer in her that was little sort of um hidden she was such a great filmmaker she spent her time on that but i think she would have liked to have done more of that 
And I wanted to dive into talking about her television work as well, because she directed a really, really monumental amount of episodes in different shows. But also when you look at those episodes, they're always ones that you really remember from the entire series because of what she did. And it, it always feels like as an audience member that she still brought her voice into these shows while still respecting what that conversation was, was already on screen because she very frequently stepped into shows that maybe were two, three, four seasons into their flow. And, and it sounds like everybody that she worked with wanted her to come back and direct every single episode once she was on set as well and so how do you feel that she really managed to bring that sensibility that she always had the intimacy that she always wanted to create the vulnerability and managed to bring that into these already existing ecosystems in the television world to tell those stories and have them feel that way I mean, I can speak to that a little bit um, because she she directed um, an episode of The Morning Show in our first season, um, which was really fun for us to, you know, it's like a David and Goliath moment being on set in this multi-million dollar show and recognizing where we had come from, you know, the the entire budget of Hump Day was less than half a day's catering on that show. Um, and, um, and you know, I can speak to a couple of things, you know, um, she never lost that thing we discussed earlier, which is creating that little cocoon of love for, for her actors, you know? And I think that episodic television directors forget you come in, everyone seems so confident, seems like they've been there forever, but Lynn never lost that sense of everyone is feeling insecure here and they want to feel love. They want to feel supported. They want to feel that you take great interest in them, particularly the actors, even if they are on their fourth season and looking a little jaded and tired. Um, she, she never lost sight of that. And I think that did make people fall in love with her. Lynn moved fast and, and she didn't, um, belabor a lot of points when she was excited about something and when she got the take she wanted if it wasn't even necessarily the exact coverage that she thought she wouldn't beat up the actress and say i got to get my medium and my close-up as well she would move on and so a lot of times you'd be out of there in nine to ten hours as opposed to a 12-hour day the producers love that the actors love that and i think that she was smart enough to know that she was saving everyone's spiritual energy and their good energy for, for another day. And, and you'd come back the next day refreshed and excited to see her because she was there and that, that lifted the momentum. And that not only, yes, saved money for the show, made people like her more because they were getting home to their kids sooner, but it also makes the show better. It keeps everybody in a good mood, wants them to bring their best work and it builds upon itself in positivity. I think that was a huge part of what she did. I agree. And I think to um, one of the things I talked to her, I, I wasn't on set a lot with her on TV, although she, she let me shadow her once on a show, but, which was great before I had done any television myself. But I know she spent a lot of time trying to memorize all of the crew names. And that is hard to do when you're landing in a room full of a hundred people that to be able to say like, Hey, Mark, Hey, Bob, Hey, Mel, you know, like, and just walk around set knowing who people are. It's so uncommon for television directors to do that. And I think it really drew a bond between her and the crew and, and they, they were happy to have her there, you know, for that reason, as well as the shorter days, which I'm <laughs> sure was a huge part of it too. <laughs> And Mel, you recently stepped into episodic directing for the first time. Um, and so I was interested in having collaborated with, with a filmmaker like Lynn as a producer, you know, and just kind of being in that community with her, with so many other great filmmakers and producers, how you feel that that really influenced the way that you then wanted to step onto set, particularly in thinking about episodic with all of the challenges that come with it. Yeah, I, uh, my goal was to move quick. <laughs> I you, had to. That, you had <laughs> to. She set that bar, you know, I mean, those are like two key things in, in TV is to like trust your gut. So because you don't have all the time in the world and, and be kind to everybody. And I think those, you know, I remember going into my first episode, having both those things in mind. And those were both things that Lynn preached and, and just lived. And, um, so it's, yeah, it, I mean, and the, I loved the, I remember, I can't remember if she told me or you, Megan, but the memorizing all the names, God, that's hard. <laughs> I, like, I don't know how she did that. And, you know, I, she, I mean, she would walk away from one episode of TV with gifts from like crew that she'd only spent like a week or two with. I'm like, to have that impact on people is, 
it's something to really um, work to to just emulate and and you know I, I kind of keep that in the back of my mind at all times. And I feel like we'd be remiss to be talking about her television work without taking a little bit of a look at it. So I'd love to throw to a clip which highlights some of her greatest work in episodic television. like you. I like you too. Here's the thing I love about television. I love directing actors. Love, I live for it. It's my favorite thing. It's 9 a.m. Oh God, I know. So I knew I really wanted to make art with other people and in relationship with other people. This is a sad song. I thought I'd seen some pretty weird shit in my life. I didn't go to film school and I wasn't told this is how you make a movie. The traditional way is putting up obstacle after obstacle in front of the most important work on the set, which is the actor. No matter how gorgeously lit it is, if the acting doesn't resonate, doesn't feel real, it's not gonna work. Stop, please, don't touch me. <laughs> this hunger that people have to see authenticity, incredibly important to me, no matter whatever the method is. Hey, it's the American way, right? You know about that. <laughs> Calm down. Get on this ride. It's going to be a good one. Do you think I wanted a daughter like you? I never wanted you in the first place. What you just did was reckless. You just put this show and everyone who works here at risk. I always want it to feel like flesh and blood human beings on the screen because that's the only way that it really resonates with me. Sometimes you have to scorch everything to start over. And after the burning, the soil is rich and life can grow there. You know, all I know is going to be an artist. Never thought in a million years I'd be able to make a living at it. And I was fine with that. You know, I'd always part-time teach, I'd part-time edit, I'd whatever, you know, do to pay the bills and then just keep making my art. Harvey Danger! Oh, his name is uh, Sean. Huh? Huh? I'm here to tell you that you'll be fine. I have always been at my happiest and most deeply joyful when I'm making my work. And it's really lucky because I've worked on all these shows where people like each other and the work is fun and it's good. It changes everything. I'm proud of you. And I also wanted to talk about some of the work that you've all been doing and preserving the legacy of her as a filmmaker beyond even just the special that you made. And, and I know that one of the things that happened a few months ago was raising some money to be able to preserve a lot of, not just footage that she'd made for her movies, but things that she'd shot in her own time, photographs, and, and to be able to really capture all of that. Um, and I was really, really interested in what a lot of that material is and, and what that looks like and how you hope people will have the opportunity to access a lot of that in the future through the funds that you were able to raise? Um, well, that's something I've sort of taken on um, after, uh, in the wake of everything, uh, her family had just so much on their plate and so much to deal with when they were just in such deep grief. And um, so I offered to sort of take on the creative archiving and, um, and a lot of the initial work was just kind of sorting through it and seeing what was there. Um, transferring what I could transfer myself, finding um, projects on old hard drives, et cetera. And then there was a bunch of stuff that I just had no way of doing myself, like old sort of uh, archaic <laughs> tele drives and, um, and tape formats and, and film stocks. And um, just uh, the, the GoFundMe that, that we did, like raise the money that was needed to do all that transferring work and get everything into a digital format, um, which is still going on. It, the, every, the, all the vendors have the materials and I'm still sort of getting it back slowly, but it has been this real um, new avenue into getting to know the a Lynn that existed before I ever met her. You know, she was 39 when she made We Go Way Back and we, and that's when we met and she had lived this full life where she had, you know, 
been a stage actor, where she'd been a still photographer, where she'd made sort of experimental personal documentaries. Um, and I had, I'd known that that was part of her life, but it was just all of a sudden being sort of given the gift of seeing all of this material that I hadn't seen before and, and getting to see her and some of the things that were present in her work throughout, like in that television clip and the films, like just seeing how much of that was present from the beginning um, was really inspiring and, and emotional to reckon with because it's just like, she was so formed so early and so many of her ideals were just sort of sunken into everything she did and that stuck with her throughout. And so, yeah, it's there. I don't know exactly how it's going to be made public. We're, we're working on that. Um, I, I definitely want to share it because um, it is really beautiful. Um, and I, it's, it's something that I have, it's been, it's been like kind of comforting in its own way. It's sort of sad and comforting to look at all this stuff and see all these different versions of Lynn. Um, and I want other people to get to have that too. And you were mentioning just now that she made her first movie infamously when she was 39. And as a viewer and a fan of her work, it always felt like her characters were so lived in and had such rich lives. And it seemed like a lot of that came from having had so much life experience before she stepped into filmmaking that she was then able to bring to her characters. And one of the other ways in which you really honored that and have really looked to encourage other people to step behind the camera who maybe have been a little bit reticent is the of a, of a certain age grant, which is going to women in non non-binary filmmakers. Um, and I believe you just awarded the first grant of that as well. And, and so just wanted to ask a little bit about some of the stories that you started to see coming through once you opened applications and, and the filmmaker that you've chosen to give that first grant to. Yeah, I mean, when, when we started that, I think Megan and I had a conversation, which I'm so, what's so naive to look back on now, but I think we were like, are there enough of them? You know, and then it was, <laughs> I, I mean, it was so thrilling and exciting to see how many, how many amazing voices are out there. Women, uh, non-binary artists of a certain age who haven't taken that step for whatever reason, if they haven't been given the platform, if they're afraid and, and just to see the wealth of, of artistic talent that hasn't just taken that step was invigorating and exciting. And even for me as a, a filmmaker who's nearing the 39 mark and still hasn't made my first film, there was something in that for me that was this like kick in the butt to be like, what are you doing? <laughs> like, it's it's never too late. And, and Lynn always, I mean, it's crazy to me now to think that when I met her, she was, I mean, she's she always felt like this like 18 year old kid to me even though she was much older than me, but, um, but it, it's just, it's been amazing to see that talent come out and be inspired by Lynn and find their voice in many ways through Lynn. Uh, and that was a very hard process to pick. Wouldn't you say, Megan? <laughs> it was so hard. There was so many good people. Um, although I will say the the person who who won the first, the inaugural grant was uh, Keisha Ray Witherspoon. And she is so talented that, it, I mean, she did, um, sort of have a such a clear voice and it just felt like she embodied everything that Lynn would want to support um, and she was so good at supporting other filmmakers um, and so uh, it, yeah it, just, it felt great to give <laughs> to give Keisha that check you know and just and that support and that sort of vote of confidence. Yeah but it's you know it has a long tail on it you know we found ourselves you know, having meetings with a lot of the other women who didn't win the grant, but were in the running for it. And, you know, we hope to do this grant yearly um, and keep going with it. And I think that it's a nice way to honor Lynn's legacy. And I think that it's, there's a little bit of a blind spot in the industry. Um, and it's, the, the industry is a little bit ageist, I think. And I think there's a blind spot for me. I always, like to support up and coming talent. And I have always found myself accidentally saying young and up and coming filmmakers. Um, and as we've looked at this grant, if we looked at moving forward, I think I'm trying to remove that word young and just to think about fresh new voices. And those voices can be 
85 years old and can be youthful and be invigorated and exciting. And, and to your point, Mel, Lynn was, um, was so full of the magic and youthfulness, even though she, you know, was 40 years old when I met her. Um, and so, you know, that's a one way we're really trying to, to sort of continue her legacy. Young in spirit. That's what we need yeah. to start saying. Yeah. <laughs> and in honoring another side of her legacy, the special itself and a, lo- and a lot of the other work that you've all been doing since has been in support of the Shelton Seal Family Fund for Northwest School of Deaf and Hard of Hearing because of her connection and ties to the deaf community. Um, and so I was interested in, in the ways that you hope to continue pushing that fund and a lot of that messaging out there and to continue garnering support for that side of her life as well. I think that fund is going to exist into the foreseeable future, the Shelton Seal Family Fund. Um, I just, uh, we we sort of set um, a goal on the GoFundMe for her archive project and said anything um, that is above and beyond what we were raising towards the archive itself, we would, we would sort of pay forward to that fund and so we were able to make a five thousand dollar donation to them just like a month ago and so i do think that'll be ongoing people really want to find ways to honor her legacy and um and that was a big part of lynn's life that a lot of people didn't know about was her family and her son milo and and his 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 experience at that school sort of changed his life and changes the lives of all sorts of kids who go to that school so i just uh it's such a, uh, you know, I, I'm so glad they're seeing so much support um, and, and that that's been such a focus for people. And in the special, there is that mention, you know, and I think we touched upon it earlier that she really was someone who made you believe in certain things in yourself. And so I wanted to ask each of you individually, what is it that you believe in in yourself because of the experience of knowing Lynn and working with her and collaborating with her? Oh, that's hard. It's so hard. (laughs) Where do we begin? You know, this is like kind of maybe more personal than I would like to admit, but it's true, which is that, um, you know, coming out of making the puffy chair and coming out of making hump day and being on the league, I I had found a comfortable spot for myself as an actor as sort of like a little bit of a frumpy, schlumpy every man. And, and Lynn really like, encouraged me and allowed me to try to open up this side of myself that could credibly play a romantic interest to Emily Blunt. And what would that mean for myself? Um, And was like, no, we're going to like, let's put you in these clothes. um, And let's say that, that you are worthy of, of that. And, and like I've discussed before, the way that she loves her actors, the way that she makes them feel good. Um, she believed in me in that way and opened up a side of me on screen that I hadn't really felt um, secure enough to take a shot at. It was, it was really meaningful to me. I think the thing that I am just realizing more recently is a, um, an acceptance with the vulnerability in all of us as humans and artists. And I think that's something that I really learned more after her passing and kind of going through all of her things and all of her materials and seeing this person who for somebody so accomplished still had so much vulnerability within herself and was, you know, open to admitting she still hadn't reached the things she wanted to and and was still pushing herself and and being, and I think was even, you know, in the, you know, later in life, really opening up to that vulnerability and rather than hiding it, I think starting to put it out there a bit more is what I was experiencing with her. And so just finding comfort and love with your own vulnerability has been a big thing I've been learning to embrace. And I think a lot of that is, is in part because of Lynn. Yeah, I, I second that. And I just, uh, you know, I, I think about all the people in my life who are so supportive of me and my goals and my career and my personal life and everything and uh, present company very much included um, in that category. And, but I just, I can't think of anyone and I'm choking up a little bit, but who was more supportive, like of every aspect of my life and of my voice as a filmmaker than Lynn. And so, um, 
to see someone else believe in you in that way is so meaningful. It's, it's like everything. So that was something that she brought to my life for sure. Uh, I want to thank the three of you for having this conversation and sharing so much uh, about your time in working with knowing and being friends with, with Lynn Shelton. And I can't think of any better way to conclude this conversation than by throwing it over to a music performance from Lynn herself.